Hello world of the internet, my name is Simon Mellor with a random vlog, but look, life tied into a bunch of things that I was going to talk about anyway, so I thought, you know what Simon, you may as well make the use of SEO basically, and the internet talking about something and get talking about it yourself. So, in the early hours of this morning, well not massively early, it was about half ten, I think he got fired about half past nine or something like that, Jose Mourinho lost his job at Manchester United Football Club, uh, we don't talk about football much here on this uh, YouTube channel. We have in the past. I mean, there was Raheem Sterling stuff, which was more talk about racism and the problems in football. Um, but we do every now and then, again, because it also ties into something else I was going to talk about on a vlog. Anyway, I thought, well, we'll just speed things up. There's no rhyme or reason to these vlogs. We just do them as and when makes sense, although we try and smash out a couple every single week. Now, from a footballing point of view, yeah, I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to happen, especially because there were these rumours that if Manchester United wait until the summer and Manchester United didn't make it into the Champions League, they wouldn't have to give him any money. The fact they've got rid of him now, there's rumours that pay off anywhere from 18 to 24 million, which always makes it hard when you are a football manager, because if you do want to be sympathetic towards someone, like I say, it's really difficult, uh, just mute that quickly, uh, when you are being paid, uh, 20, say 20 million, that's in the middle somewhere, 20 million to walk away from a job. Like if I had done what many people considered to be a bad job and got given 20 million, I wouldn't expect any sympathy either. I'm sure Jose Mourinho doesn't need any of my, uh, any of my woes either way. But uh, it did surprise me. I mean, something, I would imagine it comes down to player power. We're mere weeks away from the January transfer window, and if people like Pogba, Lukaku, uh, I don't know, maybe Matter, he seems quite happy there. But maybe some, a lot of sort of players that are influential and are superstars, you know, went above him, went to Ed Woodward or somebody else on the board and went like, look, if you don't get rid of him, we're going to go. Then as a football club, you do have to make start making a decision. Who is more important? Are we more in bed with the players or are we more in bed with the manager? And given that Jose has come out a lot and kind of moaned and whined and, you know, make a bit of a spectacle himself in the press and some people love that and some people don't, you know, as a man that doesn't support Manchester United, I find it hella entertaining because... <laughs> It's, it just watch a man come out and says whatever he wants. It is fun to see. But again, clearly Manchester United have sided with the players, which probably means Paul Pogba won't go anywhere. Again, Lukaku will stay put. Martial, everybody else they've got on, on, on their books. But it is an interesting situation. I mean, it's weird because football is cyclical, right? The same thing happened to Liverpool. They're now back in a position where they felt like they should be for the last 20 years. Arsenal fell by the wayside. I'm an Arsenal fan, so I know what that's all about. Chelsea had their time in the sun. Now they're kind of, you know, not that middling out to, to say the least, but they're not as dominant as they were in the sort of the Lampard era and the Jose era when he came in and made all that, all that stuff happy. But yeah, maybe no matter else, you know, the rumour is they're going to have an interim manager for the next six months. It could be Laurent Blanc. I think Solskjaer's. Uh, Solskjaer's been mentioned, and uh, Michael Carrick's been in there, Phil Neville, Gary Neville maybe as a director of football, and that certainly seems to tie into it as well. It appears that Manchester United want to restructure everything, and Jose Mourinho wasn't into that, so something had to give. They do want a director of football, somebody to work above, and so on and so forth. But So yeah, I imagine getting rid of Mourinho for the, for the team and for the club makes things a lot easier. They want to restructure stuff. They see Manchester United as this big entity that needs you know different influential members at different areas of the club, not just one person like it used to be with Alex Ferguson, because football has changed. And Alex Ferguson, I think, used to kind of run the club by himself. And that's probably why it worked so much. Same with Arsene Wenger. But then Arsene Wenger obviously had to leave as well for the same reasons. It's just a different world. And I think the real icing on the cake for me was that, you know, Jose is more of a defensive minded manager and I think the Manchester United way although I never understand when people say oh it's the Manchester United way it's the West Ham way it's just people playing football either way this is my opinion um, he was more defensive minded I don't think the fans like that the fans had turned against him it's been pretty much controversial all season given that it's been their worst start since 1991 or something like that so it makes sense he's gone it was a surprise uh, who they get in, I don't know. As a permanent manager, obviously uh, Pochettino is high on the list, but that wouldn't be till the summer. If somebody put a gun to my head, I'd say that's unlikely, just my opinion. Zidane has also been in the mix. Does he have the experience needed to go take over Manchester United and actually get them to where they want to be, which is winning medals, Champions League, Premier Leagues? Probably not. Obviously, you've got uh, Anto um, Antonio Conte. Maybe too defensive-minded again, if you're looking to... Bring back the Manchester United way, as they say. So it'll be interesting. But I will. I imagine that this, you know, 2018, 2019 season is a write-off. But you never know. You never know. Stranger things have happened in football. If Leicester can win the Premier League, there's nothing to say that Manchester United couldn't find their feet and get into the top four. Could happen. But yeah, I guess the, the end of the line was losing to Liverpool and then Jose coming out and saying Liverpool are a better team than us. I don't think any Manchester United manager was ever going to get away with that. Given the feud between Liverpool and United... 
and the sheer rivalry that's there. Even if you do believe that, sometimes I think you've got to put your back against the wall and think, well, I'm not going to say it because you're going to annoy the fans and you'll always lose if you annoy the fans. Of course you will. It's the same with wrestling, right? We saw it on Raw this week. The fans made their voices heard loud enough, stopped watching the television. Vince McMahon came out and went, whoops, I better, I better shake things up. However, while this ties into the vlog amount of series, and we've done, you know, we, we, we've laid the foundations, it's because a few people always do message me to say, Simon, I've just lost my job and I don't know what to do. And really, when you think about it, losing your job is one of the worst things. I think the three things that happens to everybody that are among the worst things that can happen to you in terms of how to deal with it mentally are depression or being depressed. Oh, sorry, sorry, specifics are break breakups, somebody dying or losing your job, because they are three constants in your life that you need, or at least fall into a routine with, that get you through. So you need a job because you need to earn money. So everybody needs one of those. Obviously, there's exceptions to that rule, and there's things you can do, but I'm just talking on a wide level here. And yeah, if you do break up with a, with a loved one, or somebody passes away, you then have to try and teach your brain, that person ain't here anymore, and we need to figure out a new routine that makes sense. And that can take an awful while. I mean, we're going off tangent here a little bit, but that's why I think a lot of old people that have been together for a long time do pass away when their you know, wife, husband, whatever, uh, goes. Because it's like, well, I can't go on. I've had this for so long, and the pain and the suffering must be imaginable. So they almost like they give up, and there's nothing wrong with that. I completely understand it. So the job thing is a little bit different because nobody else is involved, but it's still something you rely on. And as soon as it happens like that, there's still a bunch of stuff you have to worry about. One, where are you going to get money from? How are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to pay your mortgage? How are you going to fill up your car? How are you going to get public transport? You know, it, it becomes a very worrying thing. And especially if you don't see it coming, it can trigger depression and anxiety and worry because of course it can. I think you'd have to be incredibly strong-minded and incredibly confident for it not to happen because you also have the point is, well, why did I lose my job? Why why wasn't I doing, uh, why wasn't I good enough? You know, X, Y, and Z, there's loads of different things you could talk about. And I mean, the only really thing you can kind of do is try to process it as best there is. There's no magic pill. There's no magic answer. Uh, it kind of just ties into everything else that we you do usually talk about on these vlogs. And that is that, you know, acceptance is important. Trying to figure out, let's say that it is because you did something wrong. Well, you can use that. Like most people that go on to great things, not even great things, most people that go on to any things that they're proud of have usually made mistakes and dropped the ball, but not let it keep them down. I mean, I think there's always going to be a stage of misery for everybody. No, I don't think there's anybody on the, the planet gets knocked down and goes, oh, I'm okay. But they, they find ways to turn bad situations or mistakes into positives by learning from them, you know, uh, uh, applying that to their, their life in general. So that when the next opportunity does come up, they know they're not going to repeat history because they put things in place to, to ensure that it doesn't. And that is invaluable. You can't put a price on that. If you can actually come out the other side and learn from everything you've gone through, it's the best, the best feeling. I've been through it myself. And, you know, when you see these situations come again, you know how to deal with it. You almost get a sense of pride about it. You're like, sweet, I know, you know, I know what to do here. Uh, and then, it, but it's the in-between time, right? So you, you have all this stuff happen, you can start learning. But until you get to that next point, you're in this kind of limbo where you don't know what to do. And I mean, the specific, the specific question somebody asked me was, what would I do? And I would start treating not having a job like you're having a job. So, you know, you go on the internet, you go on job sites, you get papers, you do whatever you have to do to find as many listings as you want. Maybe if you're a writer or you make videos or something, you use the, you know, stuff like YouTube or SoundCloud or Spotify or whatever, and you just get your stuff out there. Like at first, it may not be making any money, but if you've got time on your hands and that's what you want to do, dedicate yourself to something, throw your passion into it, believe in yourself, bet on yourself. Obviously, finances are always going to be a struggle. But if you think you've got enough to get by, just put yourself out there and maybe you start to cultivate a bit of an audience, you know, grow uh, a bit of a fan base. And then there's loads of things you can do. So treat not having a job like having a job. And as I always say, it's not as easy as flicking a light switch. You know, if you're out there right now struggling with this and I just say, oh, do this. And go, oh, finally, you probably already thought these things yourself. Um, I guess I'm just hoping that maybe somebody else saying it gives you a bit more impetus. Not that I'm, I'm not saying I'm the greatest person on the planet or I'm amazing. Again, I just do these vlogs because I feel like it's important to talk about stuff that you don't really see out there all, all that much. Or at least that's my theory anyway. Could be utterly wrong, <laughs> but I'm working, I'm, I'm working with that idea. So that's what I would do. I would just, I would try and be as tenacious as possible. And also that is going to help if you are feeling a bit down because you're going to fill up your days and most people will tell you. And again, if you are feeling really bad, please do go seek help, a medical counselor or a doctor, friends, family, just talk to somebody. But because you are filling your days and you are filling your time and you're being productive, when you get to a period where you feel like you should stop, hopefully you feel a bit better, prove to yourself that you can do this. And as soon as you get that spark where it's like, oh, I'm onto something, you know, you'll have the patience and you'll have the, the you know, kind of the acumen to, to leap on it. 
and make sure it goes uh, make sure it goes where you want to go. And also, of course, if you have lost your job over this period, especially Christmas can be really hard. We did a vlog about that yesterday, of all things. Um, it's trying, I guess, as best as you can, just try and separate the two as much as possible. It is just another day. I know it has different connotations to it, but in terms of your progression in your life, it is just another day. You will get to where you need to be as long as you stay focused and keep working and believe in yourself. That's the hashtag. That's the motto for this one. Believe in yourself. Bet on yourself. And I promise you, if you work hard enough and put in the time, the world the world will pay that back. So yeah, Jose Mourinho got sacked. A few people talked to me on Twitter at Simon316. I was like, you know what? It's all come together too nicely. We'll bring this vlog forward and we'll do it today instead. Thank you, as always, people that watch. Leave nice comments. Like the video, share the video, all that stuff. It means the world to me. Uh, and I'll be back soon. Definitely tomorrow if you're on the channel. At least one video every day. Thank you very much for watching.